name is Karen and my topic is going to be on urban sprawl. So urban sprawl could be defined as the uncontrollable expansion of urban areas. During World War II, <clears throat> during World War II, um, the U.S. economy was um, solely focused on military production. After the um, war ended, this was when there was a boom in housing construction. This was then followed about by people moving into those houses and then a boom in new residential patterns known as sprawl. This was then when the term was established in academic studies. Um, so Margaret Thatcher expresses in her UN um, speech that um, the biggest threat to our environment is more and more people in their activity. In this case, more and more people means population and activity means uh, urban areas. As people um, expand um, the amount of urban areas, these urban areas eventually expand to um, wildlife, which would can result in a degradation of habitats, which then results in the animals um, being threatened. Um, for the degradation of habitats, it is um, implicated that from the National Wildlife Federation that in the next 25 years, the consumption of wildlife and natural lands will be between 60 and 60%. Um, the Florida panda was actually an example of one of the animals threatened. Um, they went actually went extinct because of the expansion of networks and habitat fragmentation caused by urban sprawl. Um, the um, the uh, overextension eventually leads to biodiversity getting affected, and um, biodiversity is essential because they play an important role in regulation and control of diseases, human health, and medicine, according to the World Health Organization. Um, this also results in a tremendous amount of. Um, economic strain as the they consume amount, the amount of land which displaces, displaces other land uses and increases per capita infrastructure costs according to Tom Levin who is the director of Victoria the Victoria Transport Policy Institute. This also results in uh, sterilizing factors such as um, transportation costs like gas and uh, pollution emissions from urban sprawl. Um, for this graph, as you can see, uh, the number of air pollution and congestion total uh, to about, um, the air pollution total is about a 700, and the congestion is right at the 500 mark. And also, fuel externalities like gas and oil um, total up to 500. Um, all these are, do add up to be a significant um, amount. Um, so these problems lead, to, lead me to my research um, question. Regula regulations should government agencies should establish in the U.S. to control the expansion of urban sprawl. Well, um, they uh, can do, government agencies can decide to implement a smart growth policy, which is a planned economic and community development. This um, promotes um, a range of mixed land uses um, and walkable communities and um, a better development. Um, this graph, which is from Philip Matter, I mean, not graph, this picture, which is from Philip Matter, who was a good job's first research analyst, shows the uh, impact of um, sprawl out communities. As you see, in the sprawl community, they are less dense and they are more spread out. This results in um, long distance traveling. Um, which can promote the use of traffic congestion. Um, but smart growth is meant to combat that as they promote walkable communities with sidewalks and curbs, uh, um, more, more compactable um, communities, and the use of public transport, which decreases the amount of traffic congestion. However, this does have a li um, restricting factor as it increases land and development costs, such as like bicycle lanes, um, sidewalks, and curbs, which, according to the National Complete Streets Coalition, cost six, um, six million per mile. Um, this also results in a number of car uh, troubles as smart growth 
community promote a uh, grid light pattern which supports the use of four way interse uh, intersections. This can promote traffic congestion as it um, encourages uh, the use of gas by stopping and um, going. And this also results in a number of pedestrian and vehicle accidents, which according to the Federal Highway Administration, more than one in five pedestrian deaths are the result of collision at an intersection. So what would happen if we were to implement this? Um, this would um, result in a number of walkable neighbors, walkable neighborhoods, as I said before, the use of sidewalks and um, curbs promote this. So this leads me to my second solution, which is the Urban Growth Boundary, which is a regional boundary set to mandate the area inside the boundary. Also uh, protects uh, farmland and um, result in um, last up to a 20 year span until they decide to implement or control a new one. Um, however, like all um, solutions, this has a limitation as this increases in um, housing prices because they limit the, the amount of land, land supply and um, restrict private uh, property owners, which can um, drive up house prices. Um, Portland is a, um, an example of an urban growth boundary. As you can see, during 2011, their uh, housing prices were about, excuse me, uh, 200,000, and it decreased all the way up to almost 400,000. Um, Keep in mind that the average housing prices in the uni United States as a whole is 200,000. Um, if we were to implement this, though, the, we would see a um, significant amount of farmlands and forest lands as they are continually being protected. According to the National Agricultural Statistics, Wisconsin, which is another um, example of the urban growth boundary, or the one who implemented the urban growth boundary, they saw an increase in farmland for 25,000 acres. They also seen a 28 increase a 28% increase in the number of farms. Also, density development will be higher as um, this will promote the use of more compact houses um, and more single family homes. Um, Portland is actually a good example of the urban growth boundary because they have the high de um, density development, um, the better use of single family homes and also more um, farms as they have a total of 34,600 farms. This impacts, also impacts the community as well. Um, on the positive note, creating these policies on a wide scale will promote positive change in urban planning and increase effectiveness and land use. And that's all. in my own presentation uh, for the urban growth boundary was um, the uh, use of um, uh, um, one of the implicate oh density development um, density development was actually um, part of by and evidence um, so I had to make up for that by actually analyzing this not only in the presentation but in the research paper itself. Thank you. And the next question, what advice would you have for other researchers to consider this topic? Um, I would have, my advice would be to look better to the solutions um, as the solutions currently out there, like um, they, uh, they don't actually uh, prevent like urban sprawl from happening but rather they just um, use it as a means to combat the problem. So I would look for a better solution to actually um, prevent urban sprawl instead of combat. Thank you. Thank you.